Okay, welcome back. And this tutorial is not really a normal tutorial in the sense that you're not going to walk away with some really great new um, inking technique or something like this. But I'm hoping you will walk away with a better understanding how you can build complicated vector illustration files. Because I'm going to deconstruct this drawing. I'm going to break it all apart and I'm going to explain why I did um, and a little bit of how I did it. And you'll, I think you'll be surprised when I break it apart to actually um, how I designed it. Because you just see a flat illustration. And you think, oh, you know, you probably drew a chair and put her there. And, and, and you think digital art is just, you can do so many incredible things with this. Of course, if this was uh, analog art, paper and pencil, or, you know, it would be this flat thing. The chair would end at her head. Um, you know, the flowers would cover this part of the chair. But when you're talking about vectors and layers, um, you draw completely differently, and you draw to give yourself more options. Options is key. You want to have as many options as possible. So as I'm building the art, I'm also thinking about, you know, what will make my life easier. Uh, should the client change their mind, or I realize what I was trying to do doesn't really work quite as well. So I'm going to get into that. So first, I, this is a cover I did for the end of the Dating mor uh, Moratorium by Stephanie Perkins. It's like a fun kind of a humorous um, uh, summer type novel. Uh, she's a wedding planner, and it's about her um, getting involved in the dating game again. So the first thing we did uh, is, you know, I sent some illustrate, I sent some sketches, and the first one was um, a scene of her desk. See, the desk is here, and um, she's got a silver bowl and some champagne glasses and some flowers. And then, looking past the desk, we see that the furniture is covered with a the cloth. They're tearing the wallpaper off, and there's a a paint bucket on a ladder. So the whole idea is this whole house, her whole office, her home office is being renovated. This next one is from the opposite angle. This would be the room that's being renovated looking through the doorway into the wedding dress. and So that gives you a, a different point of view. And we thought, well, maybe actually we should have the central, the character central on the book. And I first had her standing and uh, I told my clients, I said, well, we can add all of these things but they're not very natural in the sense we're making a collage. There's a chair and there's a desk. And and when you add all those things together, there's no real logical way to make it work. So it's going to be one of these um, fantasy background type things where we have some elements floating in. And ultimately what we decided, we'd go with this. So we have the central character. Um, she's kind of leaning over, cross legs, got blueprints, some paint cans, champagne glasses, a tool belt, the dress, the flowers, and she's kind of leaning forward. So that's what was approved. And that's what I started with. I didn't make any more detailed sketch than this. It was enough. A lot of times my sketches aren't even this detailed. I just do really simple, just basic shapes. Um, because in my mind, I, I know what I need to do. So I said, that's good enough. I just need a skeleton to start with. So that's what I started with. And this is what I ended up with. And um, was this. So let's go in deeper here. All right, so let's go, let's go deeper into this illustration. So we see her there. We see the you know, dress. We got some nice highlights there on, on the brass, on, on the brass um, uh, dress holder there. We got a nice uh, piece of furniture with some intricate patterns on it. Um, got some blueprints, paint cans, champagne bottles, tools, book with a pen on it. Uh, we can zoom in here and uh, get a better, better view of the detail of the pen. So um, you can see there's a little pen there. Got a little shadow underneath it. It's got some shading, ribbon around the book, a tool belt. Here's the blueprints, paint cans with the champagne glasses. You can see it like a little translucent there. You can see the can poking through. And also you can see part of the chair going through the stem. And then we go into her. There's her hand, paintbrush, some jewelry. Come up here and we go to her face. So 
When you look at this, you think, you just see it as a flat object. That's how we interpret it. But this is not really what's going on. Um, and just to give you an idea, I created everything on this from scratch except the pattern on the dress, which I found, the pattern on the couch, which I found on a you know free vector site, and this hammer. And the reason was at that point I was just there was time constraints and it was, I was really having a hard time making a decent hammer. So I found one, a vector hammer, but I tweaked it out to make it work. And also these blueprints. The blueprint, it's the 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 blueprint, the the floor plan I found, and I vectorized it, and and then um, I made the scrolls and put them on there. So, but so really, like ninety five percent, ninety nine percent of this was was created by myself. So let's get in here to kind of show you what's going on. Let's start with the face, and um, you can see kind of kind of a cute girl there, and. Uh, you see this is one flat thing, but this is really what's going on. <clears throat> see her hair? That's all by itself, and we can just put that off to the side. That's what left after you take away her hair. Let's put that back, and so there you go. So that's, and this, I used one of my favorite methods to do the hair, and this is this one where I create a shape like this. Let's go ahead and, uh, take some of this color and then I take my um, knife tool and I just go in there like this and cut it up and then what you get is you get all these little these little gradients and then you can also like select different parts like say I created different little sections here like that's a different type of gradient there and so I can just drag that into there all right so that's how I did the hair. I just created a shape and then I slice it up with the with the knife tool. One of my favorite things, it works for leaves really well, it works for hair. Um, it works on a lot of things. So let me delete this hair, get rid of this mess. And, um, oh, I deleted the background. Let's bring that back. All right, that's good enough. So there we go. This is the shadow underneath her hair. That's why it that goes right there, see? That's the shadow that was across her head. So now we see her head. I didn't really need to take her head to its logical conclusion. I just created a head that went far enough up so when I put hair on it, I really wouldn't have to um, worry about all of a sudden her head disappearing. So in this case, I was just trying to make the head big enough so if I put the hair here, or I put it over here, or I deleted a strand or two, she would still have some forehead underneath there. So there's her. Now her eyes are uh, individual. There's one, and there's one. I drew one eye, and then I duplicated it. No point in trying to do the same eye. It's very simple. The simple, simple shapes you can see. It's it's made up of a series of um, strokes and uh, sh and shapes right there. That was. Might have been a brush stroke, I'm not sure. Pupil. So you can see as we click through, there's a little shadow, a little gray shadow on the eye. So these are all little parts. These are all little pieces here. And then I grouped them and then I um, saved it. So let's go back here. So see, there's there was the shadows. There was the shadows on her eye socket right there. In her eye. See, now that looks really good, right? It makes a lot of sense. The eye looks, looks really good right there. Um, However, as soon as you remove that eye out of there, it looks um, really freaky. And here's the lip, two parts. Here's her background hair. This is the hair that's in the back of her head. So I put that on a different layer as well. So let's back up here. So that's her, that's her, that's her. <laughs> Oh boy! So it reminds me a little bit of the Coneheads. For some of you older enough, uh, you'll know that's a Saturday Night Live skit that was a uh, very popular around the '70s. So there's her, and let's go ahead and just take her head away. So you can see, I I only took her neck to there. I only I only needed that much neck, and then this is, of course is the shadow from her hair and her neck, 
and her head, right? That's a shadow. There's your lip. So pretty much we're getting to the point where we have just a stem for a... Um, so here's, here's where it gets kind of interesting. So when you look at this, you just see to your eye, you just see something flat, but I need a lot of flexibility, right? So I'm, I created shapes. Um, this arm is separate, right there, goes over there, and this arm is separate. So let me back up here. You can see what I'm doing. So I only needed to make enough dress because I knew, I, I paid great attention to the parts that were important. The curve right here of her hips and her waist. How it ended up here, it wasn't really important because I knew I was going to cover it, right? So I only had to make it big enough. And if you'll notice, it's the arm that essentially creates the sleeve shape. At this point, it just looks flat. It has no depth whatsoever. But you tuck that arm right in there and boom, instant sleeve, right? And same here. You put, tuck that arm in there, right in there, and she has instant sleeve too. So right here, you can see the dress coming over the top and around the shoulders. And now the dress looks very full. That's, so this looks like a very convincing um, shoulder line on a dress. But you take away the arm and it, it doesn't work at all. So I essentially was using the arm as sort of like negative space to carve out the type of uh, armhole I wanted on the dress. And the dress is just made up of little shapes. I made these with pencils like this, right? I can make another one here. I took the pencil tool and went like that and fill it in, right? So there we go. You can just keep adding. Um, these are little gradients. You can drag a gradient over. Um, let me do it here. So there's a, see there's a gradient dragged over there. Drag a gradient on top of that. So you make little shapes with the pencil tool. And then you can put gradients on them or keep them solid. So that was your dress. Let's move this arm out to the side. And let's get into this. Um, these are highlights. See, these are highlights on the hand. That's a separate. I wanted a little bit of highlight there. And if you notice, they're kind of floating around. And this one actually belongs to this arm. And you know how I made that? It's really easy. I love this technique. Um, you take a shape. This, it's like, wow, this matches this really perfectly, doesn't it? Well, the reason that shadow matches perfectly is I took this arm here and I duplicated it. And then what I did is I lined them up like this where they overlap. I selected both. And then on my Pathfinder, I had, I knocked out the front right there. And so that gives me a little shadow right there. So that's a really quick easy way to make uh, shadows and, and reflective light on anything. It works works really good. So let's back that off and get back to our whole arm here. Get rid of that one. Let's put that off to the side and let's go into this flower here. So this bouquet is made up of um, a series of stems here. Now look you can see where it doesn't it doesn't go all the way through. Let's take off that See, I didn't have to, these, see, they don't connect, do they, at all? You don't know that because it's covered. Your eye will finish the line. Your brain will fill that in and kind of, you kind of assume, well, this probably goes like this, and then it curves a little bit and comes out here, and this one curves on here. You know, when you're illustrating, um, take advantage of people's, brains. They're very sophisticated and we're really good at making assumptions and filling in the areas and following a line from one part to another. So it didn't matter that I didn't care if these lined up here. See they're all individual shapes and they're also when I made these originally I actually made these type of shapes the little rounded things like this. They um, let me go ahead and throw up um, let me go throw here so I made these here like this. Come on, why doesn't it have a stroke? Oh, I see, I didn't make a stroke. And I made a little shape like that. And then what I did is I actually went to effects and warp. And I did an arc and um, I just bent it and went, okay. And, and there, that's how it was a really easy way. You can make straws this way, bent metal, 
and so on. So I just made my shape. And then when I was done, when I liked it, I went to Object and Expand Appearance. Now it's permanently that way. And the reason is, is because I needed to turn it. All right? See how it stays that way all the time? Let me zoom in here. And, um, whoops. And so you hit, see how it, um, it stays that shape? Well, let's go back here and uh, leave the warp state on. Now what happens, let's see what happens when you turn it if the warp state is still alive. See how it's kind of it's messing it up? It's making it all fat and weird. So that's because the uh, warp effect is still trying to do a top to bottom warp effect, but now the shape is on its side. So that's why you, whenever you use the effects here, effects, stylize, and I'm uh, sorry, and, uh, distort, transform, free distort, or path um, warp, you use any of the warps, some of my favorite things to do. Um, you always have to expand it if you expect to move it um, uh, by rotating it all because it will change it. So there we go. We have some leaves. And these leaves are really easy. Um, I'll show you how to. So there's leaf, right? So once again, I made the leaves by like this. I made a, I made a leaf shape with my pencil tool. You see, it's right there. Let's let's take the stroke down a little bit. It's a little too fat. Let's go half size. So there we got a pencil. We got a uh, uh, a leaf, right? So and then I highlighted that, and then I came with my knife tool and went right through like that. And see, now I have two parts of a leaf. Um, and then you can actually change the gradient on those to have them come um, uh, from a different direction. So you could have this one go like, like, um, hold on a second, I'm on the wrong. So this can go like that, see? And now you have, you've added some depth to that leaf. So that's how I did the flowers too. I created these shapes and uh, I cut them up and, and then I made a bunch of individual flowers. So there's one, there's one there. See, these two are the same, right there. That one's the same. This one's the same as that one, and that one's the same as that one. But when they're also combined with this one and other ones, uh, you don't notice that. And I didn't make an infinite number of leaves either. I actually duplicated. This one is this leaf right here. Um, this one is this leaf. And you flip them around. And so you only, make, you only have to make a couple shapes, and you can flip them stretch them slightly, uh, do things, little things like that, and it will uh, completely make it look like you drew a bunch of individual leaves. So there's our exploded bouquet. Let's go to, um, let me pull out here and give you more of a, oh, we're making a glorious mess here. So here she is. Let's, let's move her flowers. Um, I should have grouped those a little better. So, and let's get our arms out of the way. See, your paintbrush is just floating right now, so let's put the paintbrush over there. Uh, here's her jewelry. So, <clears throat> here's, here's this, uh, here's this uh, couch. This couch is separate. This is the back, right? So let's go back there. So that's the back of the leg. See right here? And um, I put the front of the couch on top of that. Now, why would I do that? The, the reason I did that was, is this gave me options because I can make the couch seem, um, well, that would, doesn't make any sense because now the, the couch is rearing up because see, it, the, the, yeah, <laughs> if this, if, yeah, this couch was supposed to be rearing up on its hind legs, that would be perfect. But what it did is it gave me the option of changing how the perspective on this couch, I could take it a little bit farther take a little bit farther, and now each time I move that couch down, um, we can see it changes the perspective from the front to the back, so we're looking more on top of the couch. Where if I bring it up here, more equal, we're looking more at eye level of the couch. I also have the option of changing the size of this independently. So I select it, and I do shift, grab the corner, and now I can actually also make it uh, disappear even farther in the distance to increase. So that's why I did that separate. And this couch is actually a whole bunch of parts. Um, I did half the couch and then flipped it. You don't have to draw the, the whole thing. But this couch also, by having the couch separate from the girl, I can make it really big. 
and she looks really um, tiny now, right? If I put her like there, now she looks really small on this couch. Um, or I could uh, drink it and make her look a lot bigger. So by taking the time of doing the couch separately, it frees me to kind of change the composition of this of this scene, which is which is pretty important um, because I don't want to have to. If I didn't draw this couch in its in its entirety first, if I didn't make it an entire couch first, I would be stuck, right? If I had to change something, I would essentially be stuck because if the client goes, I want the I want the woman to be a little leaning a little bit farther forward. I want I'd be stuck because there'd be a hole here. So that's the magic of using. Um, uh, layers and different shapes. Same with their jewelry. See your jewelry right here? Let's go in here. I made complete rings. I didn't have to because obviously her arm was covering this part. It's, see, it's in two parts like that. But And the reason it's in two parts is I can put... This can be behind, so this is in front. Then the arm would be in between, and then I would send this to the back. That allows me to um, have it look uh, natural, right? So that gives me another option too. I can go ahead and change. Let's bring her. It, actually, that's the wrong uh, arm. So um, the um, let me go back over here. I'll show you since I already moved this arm. Let me go find it. I kind of. Where did I put my arm? <laughs> There's the arm. Let's put it back into here. So we see how those rings, wow, that really looks great. Um, so I was, I'm was i able to do that, which allows me to move her bracelets up and down her arm and just shift everything, right? So it gave me a lot of freedom. I could change this to silver. If the client, oh, I, I wanted it silver. Or I, you know, um, oh, you know what I really want? I want like a... Uh, a white pearl on each one. I could I could do that. I could decorate. I could add things. So um, I was essentially giving myself maximum flexibility. And when I do my drawings, that's what I'm thinking the whole time. What's going to make my life easier in the end when something needs to change? That's what you always should be thinking. What will make my life easier? What makes your life easier is go ahead and do the whole paintbrush and then put in her hand because I can always make the brush like this okay farther out farther in I could rotate it I could change what's in her hand to something else I could probably put uh, this screwdriver let's see what we got here I didn't make the entire screwdriver but you can see I could rotate this here put that and then I could just push it back by doing um, uh, control and left bracket. See how it's kind of going through the layers, and and there. Now she's uh, holding a screwdriver. I could have her hold this bouquet. I could have her hold anything. So think about things like that. Give yourself flexibility. So now this chair here. See these really cool backgrounds. These are actually um, um, swatches. Now let's double click on this. See it's that swatch right there, right? It's a it's a repeating swatch. And I just assigned it to this shape. You just drug it over, and it's on there. I can change it to this. Um, there's a that's a different color. See, um, let's see what this one is. Uh, that's ugly. And uh, let's see what other shapes I have here. There's a pink. Um, what's this? There. There's a crazy pattern. So it allows me to change. And that and how I created the depth. You notice how it's got a little bit of a. Let me go over here. You know, so it's got a little bit of shadow here around the edge. It's highlighted. It's lighter in the center of the pillow and then around here. Um, let me click on this. I have an inner glow. And an inner glow, you can also think of as an inner shadow. It's really the same thing. The difference between a glow and a shadow is really just whether you go with a lighter color or a darker color. So I put that around the edge. I made it a blur of 0.07, opacity 75%. So I made that, right, and I can just take it off. See how flat that looks now compared to that? Let me put back the original fabric. There we go. So you look at the difference. 
inner glow gone, inner glow on. See how much depth that creates? So I use that inner glow effect all over this couch here. Um, I also did that on the dress. I used a I used a pattern on the dress. I used this one right over here. Looks like this. There we go. So uh, there's my little dress pattern. I shrunk it down to the size I wanted, and then uh, and then applied it. So here we go. So let's go down here. Let's go to this area with the paint cans and stuff. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's take apart our legs too. So you'll see, there's one leg, and it goes over here. And her shoe doesn't go with her. The shoe was separate. Why? I want to be able to change those shoes easily without affecting the leg. I drew just enough leg. See, the shoe covers it just enough. No need to draw any more leg than that. So the leg goes over there. This leg goes over here. You can see some highlights. There we go. See, she's just floating now. And look at the dress. If you notice, I didn't really bother finishing too much of the dress here because the leg was going to create the line just like the, it did on the arm. Just like the arm created the shape by, by essentially carving out a negative space into the sleeve, I used the legs to do the same thing to carve out um, part, of the, part of the dress for me. So, and I wanted maximum flexibility as well. The shoes here, let's go into the shoes. Shoes, very simple. Shoes use the same technique as I did on these paint cans. Um, we got a, a solid color, right? A, ma a main shape. The shape has a, a inner, an inner glow. See that? Look at that. See that shoe? That's with no inner glow, and that's with the inner glow. So I just gave it so much depth. So simple. And then these are really just individual little shapes here with a gradient. So let's go back here. So there's no inner glow. Boring. There. Let's put that highlighted back on and that one back on. Now you have a shoe with a lot of depth. That's how we did the, the paint on the paint cans as well. I drew one paint shape here, and then I added another layer of these highlights. And I made the highlights by essentially doing one of my favorite techniques, which was copy and paste. Make another one. Come on, where are you? I think it's hidden somewhere. Ah, they're on top of each other. Putting one in front of the other, like this. Selecting them both. Have one by going to the Pathfinder, having one knock out the front. Um, here we go. I made a lot of these and realized that. Here we go. So there's that highlight layer, right? So let's go ahead and select this individually. And let's go ahead and drag that onto here. And you can see how I made that. And then I put that over on top of here. And we got a really cool highlight on the thing. The can, show you this, just a series of ovals. Ovals on top of ovals. That's how you make these things. Look at that. I didn't even do the back of the can. How crazy is that? Because I don't have to. Anything I don't have to do, I don't do. You know, let the program, let layers, let vector work on your favor. And so I just needed to have this bottom lip over right there. So that is that. And um, and I got a little definition there. Let's get rid of that. So really, that was the base of the can right here, was this shape. Uh, it was basically a, a, a square with a curved bottom there. And how you make these cylinders really fast, these little cans and stuff, it's really simple. This is how I like to do it. Start with a rectangle. Sorry, that's not a rectangle. That's a rounded rectangle. Start with the rectangle. Go like that. Okay, there's a can, right? I mean, there's a square. But you put a little oval here, there's the top. Oh, all of a sudden, it's a cylinder, right? Now, what about the bottom? Well, you just take this, copy it, put it down here, select them both, you know, shift, click. I'm going to merge them together. There we go. That gives me, look at it. I got an instant little rim right there. Bring this one, click, go click, 
uh, uh, clicked uh, right right bracket. Bring that one in front. Instant can. You can take another little circle, put that inside there. If you decide to make that uh, dark, uh, let me bring it forward here. And uh, why isn't it? Hold on a second here. Let me go ahead and get this. There we go. Put that there. And uh, let me bring that forward. Oh, I'm not. I'm on the background layer. Let me get back to the art layer. I wonder. Here we go. Put that right there. Let's just go ahead and just make this solid blue. Go like this. There. And now there's an opening on top of that can. Very very simple. And uh, you want a little highlight on one side? Take this. Copy it. Paste it again. Make two. Offset them slightly like this. Knock one out from knock knock the front one from the back by using the pathfinder here. Knock that out like that. There we go. Bring it in here. Let's just go ahead and give it this gradient. We'll get rid of the um, line. We don't we don't need we don't need to have the stroke on. And shrink it a little bit. Click shift. There we go. Got a little highlight on the can. So it's real simple, just basic shapes on top of shapes. This is how I did the wine glass here. I mean, the, sorry, the champagne. The champagne is a series of uh, little, little ovals here. So say this, here's the, here's the top. Here, I'll just double click this. Here's, a, here's that stem, right? That comes apart there. That comes apart there. So I didn't drew, drew the whole thing. Here's, the, here's, the, here's what's in the glass. So there we go. It's a series of little shapes. So always thinking ahead, thinking ahead. How can I make my life easier? Um, this tool belt here. Let me take this uh, screwdriver. Didn't have to do the whole screwdriver. I knew I wasn't going to show it, whether it was a Phillips or a or a flathead. So I just I didn't need to show the whole thing. This pen though, I had to I had to I had to you know put a little detail in this one here. And. Uh, you can see, you know, you zoom in. It's it's got some pretty decent, you know, enough details to to work for this. And then let's go back and stitching. All it is is um, how do I do the stitching on this one? I'm sorry, you have to bear with me here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I did. It. There we go. So it was a, a a pen tool. I made a shape, and what I did is I assigned a, a dotted dot. I, I I put a dotted line. For the for the stroke, I put a dotted a dash dash line for the stroke. So um, there we go. That gave the stitching. So I think that's uh, I think that gave you enough to to go with here. Let's go. Let's pull back and see my disaster. This looks really messed up. Let's go back. <laughs> All right. So. So there you go. Doesn't look good anymore, but boy, it looks great when it's all together. But the flexibility, awesome flexibility, allows me to come in and just take it apart. And I could change her hair color. I could change the length of her hair because I had enough head below there. I could change the look of her eyes. Everything is constantly, I can make it anything I want. So, so there you go. That's kind of like a behind the scenes look, deconstructing an illustration. You know what? What actually goes into it here? Well, let's just deconstruct this. Here, I didn't have to do the whole pole. You're not going to see the back of it. And then this here is actually in just three parts. Looked really good though when it was all when it was all together. It, that looks you know that looks really lame. But if you go back here and we put it back into position, um, that looks like a convincing. Uh, coat rack made out of brass. It, it really comes together. It has a lot of depth. So uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed and I hope it uh, kind of helped you to understand when you look at illustrations done in Vector that um, what you see is not only, is not really always what uh, how it was made. It's, it's largely an illusion. You're creating illusion is what you're trying to do. The end result is all that matters. So this is one of my, this is, I build most stuff like this and this is how um, I create my illusion. So thank you.